Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a little bit of a color grade tutorial. It's something you guys have asked quite a bit about in regards to DaVinci Resolve. So I thought if we're gonna go through the color tab a little bit more, let's show you how to do a teal and orange color grade because that is really popular at the moment. But before we get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly go over why teal and orange is popular right now and is quite a common color grade that people do. That way you understand the theory behind it and then we'll show you exactly how to do it in DaVinci Resolve. So the teal and orange color grade is popular for two main reasons. One, teal and orange are complementary colors. If you don't know what that means, I'll show a chart right now. Basically, it's colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, and they're complementary because they make each other pop. They're basically opposite. And the reason teal and orange is so popular is orange is generally where skin tones lie, no matter what color skin you have, and the opposite color to that is teal. So when you pump up, say, the highlights and the shadows with teal, and, and then you bump up the orange, oranges in the mid-tones, which is where the skin tones are, and we're gonna show you that in a second. It just makes your subjects and your talents really pop on screen, and that's why a lot of films tend to use some sort of variation of the teal and orange color grade. So, enough talking about why. Let's just jump into DaVinci Resolve and show you how. All right, guys, so let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. As you can see here, I've already got a project open with a little bit of footage, and this is just me talking to the camera as I do. So we're gonna drop that onto the timeline because we're doing color grading tutorial, I don't really need the audio, so let's just scrap that for now. So we've got this little bit of footage here, nothing too special, talking to camera, something that probably a lot of you watching these videos are going to do a lot of. So we're gonna jump into the color tab and start the color grade. Now, this was filmed in a flattish profile, so what we need to do first is add a little bit of contrast and a little bit more saturation to the shot just to get it back to sort of like a normal color space, which is where we wanna start doing those extra teal and orange grades. So as we normally do with our first node selected, we're going to go through and we're gonna bump up our gain a little bit. And sometimes I keep a look at the scope, sometimes I don't, it's still a bit of back and forth. So I'm gonna bump it up a little bit, not too much, keeping an eye on sort of the skin here. It is a little blown out, so probably don't need to do much at all really, if at all. The lift or the shadows might bring that down ever so slightly. And then the mid-tones, I'm just gonna play around with them. Maybe bring them down a little bit, add a little bit more contrast to the shot. And then here, just with the saturation slider down below, and you can see there's a few options here if you go one and two. But I just like to boost the saturation just by a very small amount. It's very, very unnoticeable. But if we go Command D, you can sort of see we've taken that sort of, so this is without the color grade. You can see we've got sort of like a washed out look. We activate it, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation looking a little bit better. So we're gonna add a, another node and add a little bit more to this color grade, just a little bit more contrast and such. So we're gonna do option S. It's gonna add another serial node. You can do that as well by going to the color nodes and add serial node. These are the ones I just tend to use for the majority of my color grading. So with this one, we're gonna to go to our curves and we're gonna go over to the first dot here, which is just our normal highlight and shadow curve or our luma curve. And I'm just going to bring the shadows down ever so slightly, probably not mess with those too much. And I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit as well. Brings the shadows a little bit tighter. And if I command D, turn that on and off, you can see it's very, very subtle but it is adding a little bit more darkness to the shadows. We don't really need to touch the highlights too much because they're already pretty strong in this shot. And I reckon that's pretty, pretty good so far. Now, before we get into the teal and orange, there's one more thing I wanna do in this shot, and that is sort of reduce the redness in my face. I think I was just out of a shower at this point, or I don't know, but I've got a pretty red face. So let's create another serial node. And it is pretty good practice to add a new node for each change that you wanna make. That way at any point you can delete a node or turn it on and off and you only remove that small change rather than doing all of the color grading in one node, you're just gonna make a mess of it. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna go over to the hue and saturation slider and I'm going to pick one of those really dark pigments and it's gonna get this here and basically I'm gonna drag it down. Dragging it down removes the saturation. As you can see here, it grays out pretty much my entire skin tone. If I pump it up, it pumps it up. And hue and saturation curves is a really great way to do things. Say if I want to remove the blueness over here, I can click there and drag the blueness down on the screen or pump it right up. 
it's just a really good tool in general uh, for controlling separate colors in the image. So have a look at that. That is in the curves tab here and you can go across and you've got different ones. So we've got hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, which again, if I wanna change my skin color to something really funky, I can drag it up and down. But we are just going to do hue versus saturation. I'm going to select that one there and I'm gonna drag it pretty far down actually. Generally, I like to go right down to the bottom where my skin color is nice and gray. And then I change the opacity of this node. To do that, if you've followed my other tutorials, you will know that we go over to this window here and we can change the key output, which is the sort of opacity of this layer. And we drag that down. You can see here in my face, the colors start to come back. So if I go to zero, obviously we've done nothing. So going from zero is a good point and I can just sort of drag that up as much as I want until I feel my skin is not as red as it needs to be. I think that's a pretty good spot right there. If we turn it on and off, see it's nothing too intense. And if we scrub through, it's not super, it's not too bad. Let's go to a different angle here. Yeah, let's go to that angle, turn it on and off. Let's, we might just lower it a bit more. I reckon 0.3 is a pretty good spot. All right, so, so far guys, all we've done is we've added contrast to the image, a little bit of saturation, and I've pulled back some of the red tones in my face. So if I turn off all of these nodes now, this is what we started with, this is what we have now. And if I turn that one off, you can see the effect it has on the skin there. So again, very, very subtle so far, but that's what we want. We wanna start with a nice clean image. So the next node, this is where we're going to do our teal and orange or our creative look. Generally when color grading, this is how it will always go. You have your base grade and that's gonna get your image to a nice workable position. And then you have your creative grade, which is where you add all your looks. Or if you wanna do a LUT, you can add a LUT. And so let's start playing around. So what we're going to do with this one, we're gonna to go to color wheel tab. And we're gonna go over to the last one here. And what that does is give us control over the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Now, like I said at the beginning of this tutorial, teal and orange is a playoff on complementary colors to make skin tones pop. Skin tones lie in the mid-tone section of the images more often than not. So we wanna boost the oranges in the mid-tones or the skin tones, and then we wanna boost the teals in the highlight and shadow to make those colors pop. And like we did with the skin one over here, reducing the redness, I like to go really, really extreme on the grade and then pull it back, pull back the opacity on the layer. So we're gonna boost the oranges really quite high on this one. So with that, with the orange section of the image done, now we're going to pull the highlights and the shadows into the opposite direction of the midtones, which is teal. All right, so we're gonna drag that again and we're gonna do pretty extreme but it's already relatively extreme when you start to do it. Now we have a very intense looking image, but what we can do now is go back to our opacity or our key up and lower the opacity of the image. So starting at zero, we can work our way up and introduce it gradually. So I feel like with this particular image, maybe 0.4 is a pretty good spot. Everything looks still relatively natural, but you can see we have some bluey tones in the shadows and if we turn that color section on you can see it does create a change skin tones still look pretty good we've got some nice oranges that pop in the scene and we have a pretty easy grade right there and that is essentially what a teal and orange color grade is is playing around with the values now you could potentially do the orange tones and the teal tones separately and control them individually you probably will have more control over it but if you are just looking for a nice quick and dirty tutorial on how to create the teal and orange look, well, there you have it. Hopefully you found this tutorial nice and helpful, guys. Drop a comment below if you want a specific tutorial. I'll try my best to bring that to you. And until the next one, guys, see ya.